Brussels is the headquarters of the European Commission, the European Union. 15 countries working for the 70 states of Africa, the Caribbean and the Pacific. In Jean Blue, Belgium, in the heart of the European Union, the University Faculty of Agricultural Sciences shelters the Bureau for the Exchange and Distribution of Information on Mini Livestock, where Professor Hardouin works. Young students are trained there for scientific subjects and development. In this laboratory, future agronomists become acquainted with entomological experiments within the framework of general and applied zoology, which will usefully prepare them for mini livestock. On the BEDIMS initiative, the European Union decided to finance a report on the potentialities offered by mini livestock in the tropical forest environment. This document is conceived to convince the authorities of tropical countries that resorting to small local animal species is totally justified and that it is now possible to replace hunting or gathering with breeding. Some countries already apply these principles for some animals. This should serve as an example to other regions and other animal species. Just about everywhere the forest is cleared to give way to cultures. The number of men and women to feed is constantly growing. The mini breeding techniques perfectly justify themselves as it is explained by Professor Hardouin from the listed Monda forest in Gabon. This 50-minute long film was shot in a series of tropical countries. It aims at showing what is being done in the mini livestock field as we know this is one way to exploit the local resources on a long-term basis without neglecting the environment. Thanks to mini livestock you can produce food for men and animals or products for sale. Mini livestock must be considered a normal element in the integrated rural development. I hope you'll have as much fun watching this film as I had when I shot it with my colleagues and collaborators. From the headquarters of the European Union, this film was shot in West Africa, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Togo, Benin, in Central Africa, the Cameroon and Gabon, Madagascar and the Réunion, as well as Malaysia and Papua New Guinea. The Aula code, better known in West Africa as the Aguti, or cane rat, is a rodent that usually lives in the bush. Young Aula codes are not wild and their manipulation is easy. Therefore, we hope it will be possible to breed a lot of them. Next to Cotonou in Benin, some applied research on Aula codes have been made in the headquarters of the German Benin Aula Code Culture Project for a very long time. Elephant grass and other graminae are introduced in the cages or other enclosures for feeding. Thanks to its typical teeth, the aulocode will be able to cut the hardest fodders such as sugarcane. Of course, aulocodes can be bred by anyone provided they have good cages, fresh water and they can cut some sugarcane. The animals also like tubers cut into small pieces. You may give them palm nut and other local products as well. The director of the Cotonou Center, Mr. Lassisi, explains to us. At the station's level, we started to observe some phenomena. 
We think those who can breed that way are peasants linked to the earth, who can recycle the waste from the harvests and the byproducts of processing which can be found in their environment. The animals should be kept in good hygienic conditions with limited stress. Aulico breeding can be undertaken by villagers either in a forest environment or in the savannah. Thus, those buildings built with local materials are perfectly convenient. They're made with earth bricks, bamboos, a solid lid and a big stone to prevent the animals from escaping. The production will sell easily at the neighborhood market, where we can also find traps to catch them. However, this would result in an uncontrolled massacre which would be better replaced with rational production in order to satisfy the real demand by the consumers. In Gabon, the authorities encourage private breeding of the Olocode, as explained by the head of the animal's production services. I'm Dr. Nomsi, director of the animal's production services in the Department of Agriculture in Gabon. We are now in a forest environment in an all-o-code breeding. To explain that in Gabon, we had a breeding project for the small game. This project started in 94, and it aroused much interest. So we have about 15 breeders now. Some of them work at the outskirts of a town, and others in the country. We are not far from Libreville in Oendo, a small center set up by the association called Veterinarians Without Borders, sponsored through French assistance. This breeding center is equipped with a lot of ground enclosures and a number of sections with three metallic cages each, where essential scientific observations can be organized quite easily. The center also provides the training of future producers. Here they're shown how to use a planning table and the main operations for reproduction. The technological transfer to the village environment can be made by using such local materials as reprocessed sheet metal, raffia stems, dry earth bricks and a straw roof. Here a mother gave birth to three young olocodes. A cement drinking trough made on the spot provides the water needed. Mr. Grégoire set up a breeding center in his village at the outskirts of the capital. He built his shed with Canadian assistance. Mr. Grégoire is well organized. He weighs his animals regularly and takes note of all useful data for good management. Here's Mr. Jean-Pierre in Libreville. We're in a district of Libreville where I set up a maternity hospital where all the babies are born. In addition, I established another project in a rural environment 50 kilometers from Libreville. An association of Olocard breeders was created to popularize this job. Mrs. Angelique's breeding center is in a clearing in the Monda forest, about 10 kilometers from Libreville. We can find all the material needed for making the buildings on the spot. Bamboo cut into two pieces can be used to make extremely solid walls and partitions without cost. The feet of these partitions are made of local bricks.
Mr. Sylvain does not live far from the town centre. He owns a garage and his workshop is very near. Becoming very interested in Olacode breeding some time ago, he attended the requisite training before setting up a farm, which he's already enlarging while he sells some of the animals.